the original term came in the late 80s when somebody threw the insult at me uh, coming out of a fun pub in the golden era of fun pub culture in the Northwest. And somebody called me a council house mover stand at the time. I was, uh, I was raging. But years later, I, can't, I actually, yeah, I am a council house mover stand. I'll actually claim that. I'll have it. And it kind of stuck in, in ingrained in, you know, the Google box up here. And I thought, and that's how it started to come about. I thought maybe you'd come and go well, it's part of my research as well. What I'm interested in is working with um, performativity and uh, identity. And talking to Mark through some of his ideas, I could see a real opportunity for me to explore that end of my research as well, working with performance artists, performers, on um, notions of identity, because the film itself is actually, uh, to all intents and purposes, quite autobiographical. And the process, the way that it was developed, was de devised through um, some meetings and workshops, and then um, just working on some ideas that Mark had. It started that in contemporary dance culture that I was in, I was being made to feel old. I didn't feel old, but the culture I was in, I started to just feel displaced and uh, started then to look at the ageing performer and ageing performance culture and started to write about it and then started to gravitate from contemporary dance and ageing dance culture and then start to look at my friends and my history of drag and performance and that's how Cancel House Movie Star basically the initial ideas started to come about and I was getting tired of the youth driven culture in the UK and the oversaturation of youth, youth, youth agenda, youth agenda. And I thought, well, what happens to these people at 35 plus, 40 plus in dance culture? Where's the support and the longevity to continue? And where did these play? Because sometimes you end up in a, uh, a state of flux. We built the set and then um, we worked on scenarios around the set. There wasn't a script as such, but um, we, work, we worked it into uh, a form of narrative and uh, through that I think Mark was so um, taken with the look of the set that I, th I think he felt he wanted to do something more with it. <laughs> I'm pretty much used to working very tightly to a script. <laughs> especially at the BBC. So this was doing all the things we tell the students not to do. We, sh we showed up without a script, we showed up without a storyboard, and we just went for it. So we kept saying to them, this isn't the way you should do it really, but <laughs> you can actually get a lot from working that way rather than to a set script. Um, I think a lot of directors work like that, that they have the the sort of the skeleton of the scene set out <coughs> and then uh, it sort of yeah. happens uh, in front of them. Well, firstly, I think Mark had quite a lot of ideas and he had a lot of stuff as well. A lot of kind of, he's collected numerous unusual items over the years. Um, there was a bit of a background that her heyday was supposed to be in the 60s, so we had this slightly kind of, the bedsits retained that feel, but we're almost, we are in a contemporary time, so we're not tied to it, period style. Um, and we just did a lot of research, looked at a lot of kind of films, um, TV shows, and got really into things like uh, vintage wallpapers, um, interesting kind of props, dressings, paintings, fabrics, and kind of went from there. Still recording. Are you ready? Action. I wrote the script, secured money, and developed the character Gale Force. And then we started to work with Olivia Dumanseo with the set designs, then a set construction person and then it took place in Stockport in Manchester in an old warehouse which was quite fitting really because of the aesthetic of the council house in there and it was just great and that's how it started and the film process came around that and then I started to think well wait a minute this set could actually then be transported and put into a different space a gallery 
So my writing started looking at the displacement of drag culture in unusual or unlikely avenue spaces and how do public react to that when it's, not, when it's removed from that safe distance of theatre performance, the fluffiness of the camp, you know, palave of the drag culture. And then you're actually not that, you're actually welcome into my world and now you're here amongst this drag queen wag queen, whatever we want, she wants to be called these days. So that's how it started, it started to shift from film. So basically it was page, screen, away from stage, gallery. Mark kind of thought that would be an interesting part to the film that people can also, in an immersive way, experience the bed set. Um, and then for the installation, what's quite nice is it's kind of grown. So we've taken the bed set itself as the basis. And then we go into these other zones that are a more kind of fantastical exploration from the bed set. So, for example, like the toilets, you then go into this odd toilet world based in the middle of a disco. And everyone can sit on the toilets and watch the film. Um, and again, some of the other spaces kind of have taken from bits of the film, bit of the bed set, but kind of grown into something more uh, theatrical and fantastical. I think um, Olivia had done a lot of the groundwork so I've just sort of helped along with some research and sort of spoken to Mark about his interests and things that he'd sort of like to pick out sort of more of his personality and Gail's personality and sort of mixing them and sort of having this sort of realistic basis like wrapped up in this sort of these odd sort of dreamscapes and ideas so I've just sort of been involved with helping develop those areas like drag heaven and the cinema and then sort of ideas for the entrance and things. Well the audience experience that some days it's Gail will be home and Gail might be drunk, Gail might be reenacting a home or washing powder moment in the 1960s, Gail might be singing Una Paloma Blanca on her karaoke, she might be watching episodes of Upstairs Downstairs or Nearest Dearest with Hilda Baker she might be on the toilet, she might be in an absolute rage. We don't know, it depends what day you're in, what mood she's in. Other days it will be the international drag artist Chris Debray, who will be accompanying Gail and reenacting their routine. I love that word, routine, it's fabulous. Let's get your routine out. And doing a turn, a turn, from the 80s doing a double act. So that'll be coming on some days. Other days I think it's Gail's social worker, Dawn Patrol and her busy mate Donna Rhea, she'll be in and she has got a couple of nude cleaners that come round once a fortnight to help her, some of the guys off the local council estate and they're happy to do it for a tenner or a bag of whiz. It's, it has evolved because I've also been collaborating with Pete Bennett, the artist fine artist and he's been capturing me in different stages and capturing Gail Force in her different stages of life and then putting these paintings on in the gallery uh, where we're looking at the death of drag, the ageing performer in one space, immersing yourself into Gail's dirty realism of the council house and her world and her everyday activity and people in her life and then transferring that into another space, which is the cinema. When the sun shines on the mountain And the night is on the run It's a new day, it's a new way And I'll fly up to the sun I can feel the morning sunlight I can smell the new morning Ooh. Mm -hmm.